Tech Rabbit here again. And um, now we're going to um, work on um, replacing the PTFE tube on the MK3S um, system, which has been upgraded to the MMU2S. And the reason we're going to change the PTFE tube is the, the current one that's in it is not. Um, not good, and if you want to see more details on that, you can watch the video. I'll put a card up there. Uh, and the first thing we'll do is we'll have we'll just like go through the instructions step by step, and then um, we'll actually do it on the machine. And let's see, here we go. So now uh, you have to get the correct PTFE tube, and in my case it was included with the MMU2S uh, kit, so that actually has... In one of the upgrade paths you would actually build a um, MKS3 a hot end, and I didn't do that, so um, because it wasn't required. But then after testing, uh, I concluded that this, this, this upgrade is needed. So I'm going to actually borrow the um, tube from that kit. But you can actually buy them from Prusa, or they even have instructions, drawings to um, how to make So, step three. So we're going to protect the print bed from scratches, so put something to protect it. Move the uh, x-axis up, so you have enough space to work, maybe halfway up. And um, then we're going to... Um, release and remove the top screw for the fan and then we're going to release and remove the um, screw here and then we're going to leave the other screws in place and then we're going to release these two screws which are embedded underneath there and then we're going to go behind the printer and release these two screws but don't remove them. Uh, we have to be careful like which screws we should only loosen and which screws we should um, uh, yeah, actually um, take out. Then we should try and partially disassemble and I actually have enough cable. It's, it's said to check, check how much loose cable you have for the um, motor but I think I have enough hopefully and then we just try and extract it now we're going to be pulling the hot end down, out, so we can get access to the um, PTFE tube. And then we're going to take the PTFE tube, and we have to put it in the right way around. Press the plastic collet. This is going to be interesting, because I don't really know how this works. But we'll see. You're supposed to press it down and then it should just come out. We'll see if that will actually be the case. And this is the what it looks like, the PTFE tube. So the bottom end and the top end, very important to get it the right way around. I didn't completely understand how you're supposed to do this. I'm supposed to push the black collar. the black coil and slide the tube all the way and hold it. Using the other hand pull the collet out and only then release the tube. This is critical. So I did. it should be easy to grab this somehow. Oh we'll see. Um, let's hope we get it right or else we'll be in trouble. And then we have to try and insert it again. Put the hole in back. And this is to, we're not don't have this part in hand but they're trying to show that it should go into its specific location and um, then we need to check that it actually looks like that and then we need to check from behind uh, from below to see that the actual hot end is orientated correctly and the distance is correct because that will tell you if it's internally um, put in the right place and then we need to try and put it together again Tighten up the screws that we'd loosened and put back the screws for the hot end. And then theoretically we should be done. So, um, 
And I'm sorry for the background noise, I have the air conditioning running, it's really hot. So anyway, we will um, get to work on that. So, I used just a bit of leftover flooring to protect the um, heated bed. I lifted up the x-axis. So that was step three. And, uh, oh, yeah. Remember to un uh, turn off the printer and unplug it. So as you see, I've got it unplugged. Okay, so let's see what we we'll start with. So step four. So that's the... Uh, release and remove, release and remove. And that's both the... Um, release fan screws Remember that one is longer than the other, and the long one goes in the ball. Let's take the one box, put them in. Okay, and the next step is to release both screws, and that's those ones in here. It's always when they say release it, so it's a bit difficult to know, like, how much. So, releases. Okay, I do think they mean to unscrew until they release. I hope that I understand. <laughs> that's right. uh, sometimes I even don't understand what they mean. Okay, so that's those ones. And then release both screws. Don't remove them. And that's the uh, two screws. One is there and one is on the other side. I'll try and remember to put a link to the instruction. I wonder if I should actually. I wonder if it would be too jarring to move the mini cam. Let's see if I even can. It's such tight spaces. Mm -hmm. 
seems to somewhat come apart at least. Something like that. It was very important to to align those two parts. So this one should be in line with the end of the fan. That would indicate that you have enough of a gap to be able to uh, Okay, so and then what did one do? to draw. <laughs> Did I mention you should remember to take the filament out? <laughs> should have said that in the beginning or was it? Uh okay. I think I'm actually going to move it, move it up a bit more. What's that man? And they want us to... so good. Um, I had to, just while I was messing with the camera also, I, well, I had to make the gap bigger, so it's actually uh, quite a bit more larger than what they recommended. Because I couldn't get it out um, before I made that kind of a gap. But anyway, here it is. It's out. Well, that's what it looks like. And then and we have to be careful with the hot end cable so we don't don't break the So oh, that's what it looks like when it's out. So what are we supposed to do? Press Press the black collet. Okay. So that there. We need to press it in. Oh, that was quite easy. And then we need to take the whole tube out. Okay. Let's go have a look at. looking at the old one but it's it's actually not possible to look at because I did some engineering on it so it's um it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't represent its original design because I made my I, myself I made a, a, um, a, oh, a chamfered this inside here and well, now we're going to get the new one And 
just cleaning this. Cleaning the old one. <laughs> so that's the old one. I tried this, this I tried before, just to try and get it to focus. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. There! Look at that. Okay, which one is which? You can tell from the other end, it's more bust up. But I actually think the hole is bigger than in the new one. And that's what they were saying, so... And then of course it shouldn't really compare the, this end, because I've actually did some engineering on, the, on that end. So this doesn't really reflect reality. You can see that this is being machined. Okay, so much for that. I'm going to use the new one, whatever it means. And then you can see that one, one end is chamfered out that way. So that's the one that's going to go in. And then is supposed to hold it at the same time push the black call it in okay well <laughs> Parsh partially succeed okay so that should be that I'm happy enough Okay, so you should do this. Push the collet in, slide the tube all the way in and hold it. So, to remove it, press the collet in, and then remove the tube, and then to put it, put the new one in, and then we're supposed to push the collet in.
and then only release the tube. So I did that. Strange. Don't really understand the logic behind that. But it's done in the way they wanted to, so I suppose they can be happy. We can be happy. Okay, now I'm going to try and fiddle this back in here. Investigate. It's actually in. As far as I can see, it is. Or it's positioned in a uh, vertical position well enough. Understood it. We should try and push the sections together. Okay. And then we should check the orientation of the heat block. Actually, pointing backwards like it was originally, and that seems to be the case. The cables don't look that bad, and then we should make sure now the um, the heat shroud or the ducting fell off. So when I was to because it's connected to that screw, so I'll, I'll put that back, so it's not, that's not visible in the picture, but it's just to see that, um, oh, I do right around, this is supposed to go, like that, no, okay, it'll just stay there, yeah, it looks like there's a distance, so they wanted to look that there's a distance between the hot end and the doctor. Wait, I'm trying to get it. Like that. So that the, uh, they mean that the hot end isn't too far up. So, next. But this is strange, because now it's step 11 reassembled of the extruder, and now you should push them together. But that doesn't make sense, because in the previous. No, they were apart still. Okay, so I'm sorry, I did step 11 before I did step 10. Yeah, oh, okay, obviously makes sense, you could. But you can't really do step 10 if they're not together, because it's hard to see. But anyway, it probably doesn't matter. You put it together, you find out if they end up at the right position, and then you take it apart if it doesn't. So, okay, so now we need to reassemble it. We start with the back screws.
Check the levels, but it can't slip out of its mold there and inside. That's right. It's not really technically possible. Ah, all these MMU tubes are in the way. Checking right. Take my headlamp so we can see in there. To try and show the can a little bit extra light. Yeah, see the end of the tube coming out there? As long as it's at that position, I think we can be relatively happy. Get an extra light. Put the hydro back in again. So I don't lose it. Kind of tightening them one after the other, not like doing one at the two complete. Okay, so that's looking like all the gaps have closed up, and then needs to put the fan screws in, and the long one goes at the bottom. The long one goes at the bottom.
Oh, I'm so sorry. That was, that was my head. Calm down. That's tricky filming this. Oh, I never remember to get my hands all the way. If you're in the way of one camera, then you're in the way of another one. At least you should make sure you're not in the way of both. That one. So, so that's done. What else? What else? What else? So, the instructions. It's done. So, okay, we've done that. So, I'm just going to. Uh, run the um, Z axis calibration again. I mean, theoretically speaking, nothing's mechanically changed, so one could chance it. There's always the live Z axis adjustment that one can one can use. So that was that one, and. Um, back. No, I, I think this is good enough, but I mean it's going to be the standard procedure running that said axis calibration. I don't know if that's any, and, and I mean the only way to show that this is going to actually help or anything is to um, to run it. Run prints or, you know, many prints. And then one could um, actually know if this is going to work. Let's see if there's anything else on the list here. done that one so um, recommended procedure for those having this printer and um, multi at least I've heard that many people have and I mean I've had um, like I said jamming problems lots of it when I referred to my video so take a look at that well, anyway consider subscribing if you found this useful there's gonna be more because I'm going to continue using the printer and the printing stuff and lots more to follow um, and um, Hit the bell to be informed of new videos. I inform others that want to do this because this I think that one should do if one finds out that the when you build it from the kit, the printer and the kit, and then you find out it's having lots of hot end um, feed problems um, and specifically jamming on this tube, then I think they'll just go ahead and change it out and um, enjoy printing. So, uh, see you in the next one.